This is what I take to most gigs. It's without a doubt overkill and too much, but I've been a professional bass player for over 15 years now and enough things have gone wrong for me to carry some of the more niche items. So this will just give you a bit of an idea of what to take to gigs, but like I say, sometimes I'll just take my bass and a lead for some gigs. Everything goes in this F1 gig bag from Fusion and it's kind of a very, very padded gig bag. I've had to put this in the hold of an airplane once and it was absolutely fine. But why I like it, it's got four pockets well, pockets within pockets, but three big ones there and one up top there and one at the back actually. So absolutely everything that I take goes in here. It's quite heavy at the end of all of that, but I like to just have one bag and also my two little cabinets, which cover me for most gigs. So I can get from the car straight to the gig in one trip, which is very handy. Try not to skimp on cables if you can. I've got an evidence audio a Klotz and a Providence cable here, which are quite expensive, but if you keep good care of them and coil them nicely like this, they'll last you for ages. The number of times I've heard other crackly cables go down on gigs, I think it's worth spending money on. This is my favourite bass accessory. It's really cheap and really useful. It straps to the side of the amp like that, and you just use this Velcro strap to secure your bass in place. If you need something sturdy, you can get a more heavy duty stand that you can just place on the floor. But this entire setup is designed to be really compact, so this is great for that. This little case contains my earplugs, and I highly recommend you get some. I've got tinnitus, which is a constant ringing in your ears, which I got when I was about 20, playing in a loud rock band without ear protection. Not fun. If you go to kit.com forward slash online bass courses, you can see a few different varieties that you can get. But these I spent about £150, I think, on custom moulds. It might have been a bit less, actually, but they fit my ear perfectly. And the tip here, I think, is to wear them at the beginning of the gig or the rehearsal, because then you get used to them really, really easily. I think if you play a few tunes and then go into them, it just feels a bit uncomfortable. But I really, really highly recommend getting some earplugs. Again, go to kit.com forward slash online base courses and you can see my new iPad setup for charts that I use now if using music. But good old paper and a pencil can really help you out for last minute charts. And if you're doing any shows, you're going to need to make some annotations. At the moment, I'm playing a five string active bass, so I always carry these nine volt batteries around in case. If there's a big session or a gig, I'll always replace it before then. But they last, they last a while on that bass. I did play a Warwick bass a number of years ago, way before I knew anything about gear. And uh, during the gig, the bass suddenly started to sound bad, and that was the battery kind of dying. I didn't have a clue about that. So do make sure that you carry these batteries if you have an active bass. And also don't forget that when your lead is plugged into a bass, even if you're not playing, the battery is draining. So take that lead out if you have an active bass. Always handy to carry chargers. I carry one for my Kindle and phone, especially if I'm on longer trips. This was one of those ones I learnt the hard way. I did a gig once in a house which had a dog, which I'm allergic to, and I get an asthmatic reaction to it. It wasn't too bad, but it was uncomfortable and I didn't have my inhaler. So if you have anything like that, make sure you carry any medication you might need. If I need to, I'll usually take a DI out of the back of my mark base amp to the desk. If there are sound companies or bigger amps hired then that's all taken care of but I always carry this Sans amp DI which is a great thing to have anyway. It's a good sounding thing to record with but I always take this just in case something goes down. I could just plug straight into my base and just monitor myself from one of the speakers and I'm good to go without an amp. I don't usually break strings, but it did happen once on a bass that had a bit of a faulty bridge to it. It was cutting away at the strings. So that happened a couple of times. Around about the same time I had an amp as well that kept blowing fuses, so I always carry spares of those now. We don't really live in a business card world anymore, but I did give one to someone years and years ago and got a really good gig out of it, so you never know. This is always handy to have because you don't really want to rely on someone else in the band to carry one of these, just in case they don't have it. So at the moment my setup is 
one combo amp which is attached to an external speaker which takes one uses one plug and then a pedal board but you might often be a little bit far away from the next plug socket so I'll just carry this around for that reason. If I have a gig that needs charts and I'm on the iPad lighting takes care of itself if you're in a theatre you'll usually have a theatre music lights so that's no problem but just on the off chance that I need something I carry this little book light around that just stays in the case don't have to worry about it if I need it it's there. I carry a nice sturdy music stand in my car but if ever I'm doing a gig where I'm not in the car or I just don't really know that I need music until I get there I carry this fold up stand. I did a session the other day and I didn't have one of these and <laughs> it was a little bit awkward reading off my leg or off the floor so that's always a good thing to have. I used to use this Korg pitch black tuner but now I've just got this uh, polytune that clips to the back of the bass head and uh, you see a lot of people using these now and I think they're great. I think it's definitely worth learning how to play with a pick and for that matter learning how to play slap but I always carry a few picks of different materials and thicknesses just to get that kind of rocky sound or you can actually play a lot of great funk with that if you check out Bobby Vega he's amazing and I also have one of these little foam I think it's called a Barker mute but you know you can make your own from sponge or there's a little bit of sponge on one side and on the other side it's foam and you get a really great thuddy sound if you put it under the bridge which you can also get by palm muting and using your thumb but sometimes that's great to have especially on sessions for a slightly alternative retro sound. I don't always need this, but uh, if I am DIing straight to the desk from the amp or using the Sans amp, I always have a microphone cable. I've got Dunlop strap locks installed on all my bases. I have used shallows before, but I found that the little nut thing has come off before. And I've even seen a guitarist where that exact same thing happened, and I managed to see it down there before his guitar came crashing down. And uh, the old Warwicks, I don't know if they still do, but they had this little push button thing straight in. And again, a few gigs where that came off. So I use these Dunlop strap locks, but I always carry just a normal strap with nothing on it because you can put those on the Dunlops if you if your strap goes missing for some reason. And you never know. I've, I've lent this to a guitarist once. It's sometimes good to have stuff to lend to other people. So I always carry that strap. Hopefully your bass is nice and set up before you get to a gig or a rehearsal. But I always carry Allen keys with the correct sizes for my bass so you can do a few little tweaks yourself, which I would actually recommend that you learn to do that. I'll be doing a blog post on that. But if you can learn to do a few tweaks on your bass, especially maybe if you're flying away to another gig and uh, you can take this with you. If you've got a higher bass, you can set that up to your specifications. When I was a lot younger, I did a gig at the end of Brighton Pier in the UK on an extremely windy day. It was chaos. I had to kind of improvise and go almost behind the amps to as a windbreaker. But uh, yeah, I carry these uh, clothes pegs just in case. If you do an outdoor gig, you can clip it down. It's less relevant these days because everyone uses iPads, which is a bit of a godsend. But sometimes you'll be working with a band and they might have a, a book of, of charts of music. So or a real book or something like that. So always worth, after that debacle, it's always worth carrying a few. I don't use most of that equipment most of the time, obviously. But if ever I do need it, it's there. That's the point here. Be prepared for your rehearsal, gig or session. That extends to learning your bass lines, learning your music, preparing your charts if you do have them. The fewer surprises you have, the more you can concentrate on making music.